so John Stewart's at it again. Now, John Stewart, uh, last year, he went on Stephen Colbert yeah. and he told people yeah. where the virus came from. It came from the Wuhan lab. Stephen Colbert flipped out, tried to stop him. John Stewart wouldn't stop saying it. And so then he was kicked out of polite society for about a year. And, <laughs> and no, no kidding. It really shook him. In fact, he did an episode about how it shook him, about how people were angry at him for that, for telling the truth about because now people without religion have replaced science as their religion. So science can't be questioned. Science is now a religion. And that's to the people who like to vote Democrat. That's that's a fact. And Carl Jung predicted this, by the way. I'm reading that book, The Undiscovered Self. And he predicted all this, and he explains how this works. And so John Stewart got kicked out of that polite society by people who treat science and government as a religion. And uh, he'd been trying to get himself back in. So to get himself back in, he hung a, a medal on a literal Nazi. John Stewart, the, he gave an, an, an award to a Nazi, literally. Uh, that's for the Ukraine war, and he'll never tell his audience the truth about the Ukraine war. He also then did uh, promotion PR for the COVID-19 vaccine, where he brought on three vaccine liars, and they lied to you uh, about almost everything. Um, and John went along with it as if he was actually curious. Uh, and then he did uh, a tongue bath to two of the biggest blood-soaked war warmongers in the history, uh, Condoleezza Rice and Hillary Clinton. So those are the three things he had to do to get back in. And then he did another one where he then went after Tucker Carlson. Now, Tucker Carlson has been doing the best journalism of any mainstream news journalist uh, around for at least, a at least the last three, four, five years, ever since the Syrian war. And Jon Stewart, of course, has been doing nothing except simping for the establishment. And so Jon Stewart uh, then had to come out and say this after... After Tucker Carlson went to Russia and said, hey, it's really nice here. It's nicer than the United States. Why is that? And like a true adult child of an alcoholic, Americans didn't get mad at the people who are making our subway system and our cities failed and filthy and crime ridden. They got mad at the guy who pointed that out. Tucker Carlson and Jon Stewart enabled them like a good adult child of an alcoholic. Because the difference between our urinal caked chaotic subways and your candelabra beautiful subways is the literal price of freedom. So, oh my God! So that's <laughs> so the reason why there's rats and urinal caked subways and filth and crime and graffiti. It's because we have freedom. I've been to other countries that have freedom. They don't look like this. No. And he's pretending no. that Russia is the Russia from 40 years ago. Uh, meaning it's the communist. It's not a communist state anymore. It's the same uh, crony capitalist bullshit that we have here, except they don't. It's not as bad, apparently. Uh, so then uh, here he he had to do a both sides thing on Hamas and Israel, pretending like they're both equally bad. So that's his new thing now. His new thing now is to try to pretend both sides are just as bad as each other. And let's watch this. Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu finally laid out his plan for peace. Benjamin Netanyahu is calling for complete demilitarization of Gaza, as well as Israel taking over security and controlling entry and exit points to Gaza. So your peace plan is a siege. <laughs> A military see you really think a military solution ends this cycle so there so there there's John Stewart really giving it to Netanyahu the way he deserves he just playfully roasts him like this was a birthday get-together and he's the official comedian and his friends at the office said hey give our guy some shit it's his birthday that's what that was like he'll love it ha ha BB you know I'm just kidding so then he goes on and here's the real bad part look the Israeli position doesn't seem so tenable Perhaps I can find some diplomatic leeway in the Hamas position. Israel is a country that has no place on our land. We must remove that country. Does that mean the annihilation of Israel? Uh, yes, of course. I cannot find <laughs> diplomatic leeway in the Hamas position. <laughs> F 
So here we see John Stewart for the elite trying simultaneously to regain street cred while also not angering his masters and winding up in the leather gimp suit in the punishment dungeon for another week. <laughs> It's a tricky balancing act, having to look like you actually have compassion for the guys in population, while at the same time completely ignoring the real cause of everything involved. That's uh, what John Stewart just did. What? Let me bring in. So th this is his new game now, and his game is to. Uh, it's very M MSNBC like, and he he's not telling you the true story of what's happening. He's pretending like both sides are wrong. And he's doing it in a in a way using the kind of humor that you would use at someone's birthday party. But well, let me throw it over to the boys from Do Dissonant. Is, 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 is. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, he and the rest of these libs in the media, they're such anti-racist, right? They're so anti-racist, yet it is incumbent upon an imprisoned group of brown people living in an open air concentration camp to be diplomatic towards the people who are torturing them brutalizing them, surveilling them, bombing them, and now starving them. Oh, not too much diplomacy coming from that side. Would you say, hmm, Matt Turner wasn't as diplomatic as he should have been towards his masters? That's what he's saying, but they would never say it in that context. In this context, sure. He goes on in that segment, too, because I watched the whole segment. It was a horrible segment. He goes on to pin some blame on the U.N. as well. Well, the U.N.'s not helping because there's all this dysfunction at the U.N. Dysfunction caused by the United States. The U.N. is fully unified in, in favor of a ceasefire, except for us. We're the ones sabotaging the U.N. So, yeah, this was both sidesing it all yeah. over the place. He just wanted to give his audience the moral cover to throw their hands up and say, well, it's complicated. It's a terrible situation, but there's blame to go around, and we can still feel exactly the way we feel now without feeling too bad about ourselves for it. That was the entire purpose of this monologue. It was really quite awful. Yeah, that is a framing that we've heard forever, and it's something that Israel apologists always hide behind. And, and he actually says that straight out in the course of that monologue. Well, yes, it's a complicated history. It's really not complicated. <laughs> not complicated. It's really not complicated. Mostly European Jews who were not from that region took out what had been done to them by Nazi Germany on a population that had nothing to do with it, displaced them from their homes, drove them out, and established an apartheid state. It's not complicated at all. It's the simplest fucking thing in the world. And throughout that, and as Keaton points out, the U.N. segment was so deceptively edited. The more you watch Jon Stewart now, the more you realize how much of classic Daily Show was probably bullshit, but you just didn't realize it yeah. because you weren't looking for it. Because now that you know so much of what he's saying is bullshit, you look at the tactics he uses. If you know the subject, you know he picked somebody, for example, who can't make an argument who's not media ready, who's not going to be comfortable to make them look like an idiot in order to discredit the thing he's trying to discredit. And then you look back on The Daily Show, how often they had these mumbling, stuttering people. And now knowing the subjects, you say, well, why didn't he interview this person, this person, this person, exactly. this person could have given him an argument? And he never does. And he, of course, he's he's ignoring the fact that Hamas's new charter does recognize the borders of 1967 which would give the Palestinians the Gaza and the West Bank and Israel the rest, and he doesn't care. Uh, so I'm sure – So go ahead. And the thing that you showed there, I haven't seen that whole monologue, but I've been to five countries in the last 12 months, and the only country that's somewhat like the United States that I've been to was India, a po an impoverished third-world country. To say that this is the price of freedom – Greece is not a shithole. Italy's not a shithole. England's not a shithole. They have their problems, but only the United States is the kind of shithole that where you see just crumbling roads and infrastructure. I have not seen that anywhere else in the Western world. I'm here right now in New Orleans. I am telling you, you could go two miles from where I'm staying. I'm near two lanes, so it's relatively upscale over here. You go two miles from here, 
there are there's there are roads where the asphalt is gone, where you can see like little chunks of asphalt and it's dirt roads. There is no other Western country that I've been to that is in that condition. And I'm sure so the holes of freedom. So I saw that's the that's right. <laughs> the price of freedom. Yeah. I'm sure someone expects us to have both sympathy and empathy for how torn poor John Stewart is in the middle of all this, trying to do the right thing while knowing what will happen to him if he actually does, and choosing the wrong thing and then trying to make up for it in this back and forth over and frickin' over again. What a gripping hero's journey this is for John. I'm sure Netflix will do a biopic on John and his struggles to keep Zionism alive, along with his own reputation as a human being alive as well. I think it's going to be called Lucky Yet Fucked. The John Stewart Show. <laughs> so other people have made lots of points. Let me show this. John Perry says, uh, John keeps up the preferred teaching of the Middle East in general. They all hate each other and have for a thousand years. We've tried everything. Imposed borders, bombing, chaos instigation, bombing, arms <laughs> sales, bombing, imposed leaders and well, bombing. But nothing works. Uh, here's three in a row. This is so sad. John could have educated people on what is going on. Instead, he just made a poor joke, but not surprised. Zionists keep playing this clip over and over as if this guy makes the policy for Hamas. That's your point, Russ. He points out to this guy. Anyway, he also said free the hostages, but didn't say a thing about the Palestinians held in Israeli jails. One more. Hamas literally accepted a Palestinian state within the 67 borders. Israel walked away from that. Uh, these last four months, Israel has made an excellent case for the Hamas position on this, by the way. <laughs> they're, yes. they're starving children, blowing up yes. children, women and children and grandparents. They're literally starving them. And they're doing that. They're admitting they're doing this. They're cutting off their water. They're cutting off their food. They're doing this to do what's a, it's called mass punishment, group punishment, which is a yeah. war crime. And they're doing it right out in the open. That's what they're doing. They're bombing them, killing them. It's a genocide. There's no other word for this. I guess some people like to say ethnic cleansing because it sounds nicer. It's like the difference between torture and uh, enhanced interrogation techniques. But it's the same thing. You're, you're bombing civilians on purpose, and the ones you're not bombing, you're starving on purpose. Starving. Like, that. for real, they're dying from starvation. Children. And John Stewart's like, ah, eh, they're both little, ah, 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 ah. Um, well, you know, that's the New York Times readership, too. I think we're going to do a segment on that later in the stream, if, I, if I'm not wrong. But, you know, um, he has to give his audience this kind of moral cover that the libs always seek, right? We have to feel bad about what's going on in Gaza. Otherwise, we're not good liberals. But we can't feel too bad about it to the point where we can't stomach a vote for Biden because then we're not good liberals, right? So that they have to constantly keep those two things in their head I at the same time. They have to juggle pain. those things. Right. Exactly. Right. They have to bear witness to it, but not to the point where they actually abandon the basic premise that Biden is the only thing standing between, uh, you know, us and the hell that will be a second Trump term. And if you get too bitter about this, then you end up like those Michigan voters who vote uncommitted and say they're not going to vote Biden in November and that's a very, very uncomfortable place for an upper middle class New Yorker to find themselves. Hey, come see us live on tour in Los Angeles, Palm Springs, Stockholm, Amsterdam, Rotterdam, Berlin, Copenhagen, Oslo, Stroudsburg, Pennsylvania, Cortland, New York, Oakmont, Pennsylvania, right outside Pittsburgh, El Paso and San Antonio, Texas. Go to JimmyDoor.com for a link for all those tickets. Mm -hmm.